Well, there's only one thing these countries are known for, so let's just get it out of our system. <laughs> Welcome to one of the most classified regions in Europe, Central Europe. In today's video we explore hopefully the least controversial part of this region, Czechia and Austria. Now, it is very common for one to fly into Prague and go travel to Germany, Austria or Poland for some days, but that is not what we're doing. Instead, we drive from somewhere in South East Estonia for the giant piece of pierogi that is Poland. This is a much bigger road trip that I went on in August, which the next 7 vlogs, including this one, will be on. In our first episode, we traversed from said Southeast Estonia to a small town near Wroclaw, and I met up with one of my most closest animator friends, Murfete. Well, after the meetup ended, we continued to drive through where else? Praha. When you reach the outskirts of Wroclaw on the S8 highway, you see very modern roads, in fact, the second most modern in Poland, only after Warsaw itself. Look at this beauty. Six lane! But once you read the Wroclaw zone, you enter smaller roads and get a glimpse of lots of flatland and some villages, but mostly flatlands. Now, this part of Poland is quite special. Historically, a part of Germany and with a mixed community of Poles, Czechs, Moravians, but mostly Germans, and their own local minority, Silesians, well, of course. Oh, well, cool flatland, right? Boom! This is what you slapped with when you entered it from this little shit. And let me tell you, even though these mountains are a lot shyer than what we will experience very soon, they are already very impressive and just beautiful to look at. I mean, just look at this! At some point we entered Czechia, and I genuinely don't know when it happened, as protecting a border with Poland and Czechia or Slovakia is harder than spotting a needle in a haystack. A reoccurring theme you will see here are these beautiful small towns and villages. Just very cute in my opinion. One quick gas station break later, we reached the glorious Praha or Prague, and when evening came, we went to town. The first thing I wanted to see was Prague Castle, which was one of the most gorgeous Gothic cathedrals. But after trying to find the way up to the hill where it was located, we eventually gave up and walked past the pathway that led to it. Which is... Then after walking past this World War II memorial, which, fun nerds, they have it within as 1948 and 1949, as for Czechs and Slovaks, where they began that year. Now at that point, you probably want to get a beer. So, you do! But anyway, here's the least blurry picture I got from Czechia's staple dish, whatever the name of this may be. We then reached one of the more modern icons, the John Lennon Wall. What this is, is a monumental wall of graffiti since the 1980s, full of all sorts of things, mostly local and global issues and some hippie shit, I don't know. From there, you reach a small part of the old town, and from there, boom! Karlovnost, Charles Bridge. And it's just stunning. Obviously, it's one of Prague's main attractions and has some of the most tourists in the daytime, but for good reason. It's a gorgeous bridge on the Vltava River, and I really like that it doesn't just light up in the night, but preserves the way it should be, and it's actually old too, and not something that looks old, but in reality is newer than most of the city. And then you reach the main old town, with all of the main attractions. Now, Prague is infamous for its unhealthy amount of tourists, and even more scammers. Your places like the astronomical clock on the bridge would have been flooded with all sorts of different tourists. But in the night time, not really. There still were tourists, but it felt nice and more real. With an amazing nightlife vibe. After getting a bit lost on the side streets, we end up at the one and only Old Town Square. First of all, you have the famous Prague astronomical clock, or if you're gonna be autistically linguistic, Praski or Loy. Every full hour, there's some small show that goes on there, where extra other people gather and cheer at it as it happens. Then there is obviously Tin Church. There's also the Orthodox St. Nicholas Church, also pretty cool. But this confuses me a bit. Why does Czechia have some of the most coolest churches ever when they're the most atheist fucking country in Europe? After the old town square, we head back to the Vltava embankment and walk for a while. Walking by the creative name named New Town, which is full of beautiful Baroque buildings, including the National Theatre for one. And then there is also new architecture, such is the case with the Dancing House, which just shows Czechia's best efforts to make modern buildings. And it's cool. From there, with our legs just managed. We reach our hostel. The next morning, we immediately start heading south. But even though I thought I would only see the city in the night time, we actually saw quite a bit in the day, including mostly the new town part. Remarkably, the glorious Narodny Museum with the Wenceslas Square. We also get a short glimpse at some new part of the city. Uh, but yeah, that would be Prague. A great city that I unfortunately got so little time to see. And I am well aware I missed out on seeing most of the things it has to offer. And that's why I hope to come back and spend the whole week there rather than one night. The vibe, sights, and the fact that it's not some museum of a city is just amazing to me. But 
But we couldn't be in Prague for any longer. South Czechia is waiting. We arrive in the popular small medieval town of Český Krumlov down in South Bohemia. It's a place with a very lovely old town and a castle too, of course, where you can see literal bears! I must be wondering, what the kurva are brown bears doing in makeshift ponds in fucking Český Krumlov? The castle itself is free and you get some incredible views over the town and the surrounding mountains, and also some entertainment. You can walk through the open castle building yourself, it's really nice. And that is the old town as a whole, it's really cool. And after that, it was time to go to Kaufland! For the first time. But um, why are you German store in Czechia? Well, dear viewer, I have never gone to Kaufland before and they're very common here. There you obviously can't miss the big beer and Kofola Isle. And once that little Kaufland experience was done, we leave Czechia and enter the country it wants to be so bad. Austria. Now, almost immediately after getting into Austria, the landscapes go from scenic to... Yeah, it's self-explanatory, but ho ho hold on. You can see even better. Like, just look at this! These are none other than, of course, the glorious Alpine mountains. Massive and dramatic, both rocky and forested mountains with telephone masks on top. This is the real deal. And if you didn't know, we're only heading further into the mountains. Well, we didn't unfortunately have time to go to Salzburg, but our sights were set on Innsbruck, which meant that we had to go through Germany. After waiting a bit in a pointless crew at the border, I entered Germany for the first time since 2020. But unlike that time, when I was in Berlin, I I got to see the exact opposite part, South Bavaria. Finally independent! Everyone said I can't be independent! The mountains were stunning and so was the flatland countryside on the other side of the Munich highway. But there was a particular lake that was supposed to be very scenic. But when we got there, it was the most average thing ever! But with that out of the way, we continued to drive through German Bavaria and Austrian Tyrol. The drive through Germany was short but sweet. We then reached Innsbruck, capital of the Tyrol region of Austria, aka this little shit at the west corner of the country, which is also largely now in Italy. Mamma mia! Fanculo! Il Trentino Alto Adige è italiano! Fanculo! The first impressions are very nice. The city has a cool atmosphere and it's beautiful too, of course. It feels a world away from Vienna, which I don't remember much of anyway. One of the famous icons here is the main pedestrian suite with the 18th century statue dedicated to the Virgin Mary. I mean, what else? And the best part behind the medieval and baroque buildings are the mountains. After a quick dinner, how did you do? How did you do? How did you do? We wander around a bit more. The most famous thing about Innsbruck by far are the mountains and winter activities. So it's no wonder that the Winter Olympics were held here twice! Another thing you might stumble across is this bad boy. The Triumphal Arch of Innsbruck. I swear, European countries have been historically good at two things. Colonizing natives from another land and building triumphal arches, baby. This one in particular was built before the are one in Paris in 1765. Just for the wedding of Archduke Leopold of Austria and Maria Luisa of Spain. It has a very unique look compared to other triumphal arches, but yeah. That would be Innsbruck. So where to next? Well, you just had to wait for the next video. But yeah, that would be Austria, Czechia, and a sliver of Poland and Germany. Countries blooming with incredible history, nature, and culture. For the person of Czechia, it is basically the result of a perfect mix of Poland for its atmosphere and people, and Austria for its history and economics. As for Austria itself, well, this is a lot more of a Western utopia to me. Obviously, it'd be completely different to go to Vienna, but this part was certainly more interesting. It's got some of the best mountains. Before I end this off, consider leaving a question about this trip. Just anything but worse than a technician. Then did I go to X, Y, or Z? And I'll answer some of them at the end of the next video. I'll see you then.